This year has seen some really entertaining title races and relegation battles throughout the entirety of Europe. But what if I told you the best of the best in terms of title races actually happened in Belgium? But first, a quick word from our sponsor, and today's sponsor is Exter. Exter makes wallets half the size of a conventional wallet, but still carry up to 12 cards and cash. And you can access your cards at the click of a button with the signature trigger mechanism. So not only is it an easy fit into your pockets, you also don't have to dig for your cards and cash like it's Minecraft Pocket Edition in 2012. And say, are you irresponsible with your belongings? Well, firstly, stop being that way. But more importantly, Exter has a tracking device that you can easily insert into your wallet so you'll never lose your cards and money ever again. It's also solar powered, meaning just two hours in the sun gives it three months of charge. Exter will be giving you, my lovely subscribers, a limited time discount of up to 25% off from June 21st to July 5th. All you have to do is use the code displayed here or click the link in the description. Sponsors like these help me to keep producing content for all of you, so if you use the code or click the link in the description, it really helps a lot. For many of you, the Belgian Pro League might be a bit foreign, so here's just how it all works, because it does work a little bit differently than most leagues. We're going to focus on the title race for this one only, so basically there's just two stages. There's the regular season, where all 18 teams will play each other twice, just like any other league. Then, after all those games have been played, there's the second stage the playoffs. This is where the teams that finish top 4 are put into their own playoff group and have their points tally halved and routed up. So for example, Genk and Union saint Juruaza, who both finished with 75 points in the regular season, now have 38 points. While Antwerp, who finished with 72, now have 36, and Club Puj, who had 59 points, now have 30. From there, the top 4 will play each other twice, and whoever has the most points by the end of these matches, is the title winner. Going into this year's playoffs, both Genk and Union saint were tied on points with 38 each. Two points behind them was Antwerp with 36 points, and six points behind them was Club Puj, who actually stole the final playoff spot on the final day after Ghent bottled it against relegation candidates Ustent. The first set of games commence, and Genk start well defeating Club Puj 3-1. A couple days later, saint is stunned at home as Antwerp take all three points and are now second in the playoffs. Antwerp go one step further, and a week later snatched the league lead away from Genk after beating them 2-1 at home. Meanwhile, saint gilles do well to recover and win in Bruges. Match day 3, and Antwerp has won 3 straight now, and saint gilles continue their winning ways as Genk continue to fall down the table. So looking at the table halfway through the playoffs, Antwerp has a 1 point lead over 2nd place Union saint gilles while Genk, who started in 1st, now find themselves in dire need of better form. Into match day 4 though, and Antwerp's win streak comes to an end as they lose to Bouge. Genk and saint gilles share a point, which now sees Union tied on points with Antwerp. However, Antwerp had the advantage thanks to their goal difference. The following week gave us a clash between 1st place Antwerp and 2nd place saint gilles which ended in a draw. Genk took this as an opportunity to catch up in the title race again and earned all 3 points against Bouge away. So going into the final day, this was the table. Antwerp were just 90 minutes away from winning their first Belgian league title in 66 years. Tied with them on points, and goal difference though was second place Union saint The last contenders for the title were the initial league leaders Genk who started the playoffs pretty poorly but have bounced back and are now just one point behind the top two. The last games to be played were Genk vs Antwerp and Union saint vs versus Club Rouge. Throughout the first half of each game, everyone traded blows with one another. However, no one was able to knock down their opponent besides Genk who threw Toku Orokodare scored right before the end of the half. With that goal, Genk were now back as league leaders for the first time since match day 2 of the playoffs. But their reign at the top didn't last long, as right at the beginning of the second half, Victor Boniface and Simon Adingra link up and put saint gilles up 1-0. Thanks to one of the league's best dynamic duos of the season, now the league lead belonged to Union saint gilles 58 minutes played in Genk now, Girano Kerk squeezes one past the keeper to equalize for Antwerp. As results stand now, Antwerp were now in second as Genk fall back down to third. However, 17 minutes later, Genk restore their lead thanks to Brian Hainan, and once again, the live table has changed. saint gilles remain at the top, but now Genk is breathing down their necks in seconds. But what's this? Oh no! The Arsenal Dortmund 76ers Boston Bruins virus has found its way into Belgium now! 
Into the 90th minute, Sancho Luaza have let the title slip from their grasp and now all of a sudden, Gank find themselves at the top of the table. But things get even worse for Sancho Luaza, who concede another goal against Blues just four minutes later. This time, the goal scorer was Noah Lang, who took his shirt off to show to the fans. You know, you're still fourth right now. However, if results stood though, Gank would be champions of Belgium for the first time since 2019. But then, into the fourth minute of stoppage time, with Antwerp desperate for a goal knowing they would steal the title away with a single equalizer, Belgian legend Toby Alderweireld puts his laces through the ball and effortlessly finds the top corner. And so, in one of the closest title battles ever, Antwerp for the first time since 1957 win the Belgian Pro League. They will now also have the opportunity to qualify for the Champions League for the first time since 1957 if they can get through the playoff round. So that was the closest title race of the season. I had a lot of people request this video idea for me, so uh, if you're one of those people, thanks so much. This was indeed a very fun video to make, even if it is pretty short. But what do you guys think? Was this the best title race of the season? Would this be up there with the best title races ever? Was there perhaps maybe another title race that was even better than this one? Maybe not in Europe, but maybe somewhere in, I don't know, South America, Asia, Antarctica, wherever. But of course, a massive shout out to all our patrons, including Stan, Janos Balash, Chris Damaseno, Miliwe 9 Aldipu, Alex Rod, Ulta, Amin Suomez, Aresan, Carlos Anaya, Daniel Ortiz, Francisco Hernandez, Guy, Joel Carvalho, Marco Fujimoto, Miguel Munoz, Return Fire, Rivera Drawn, Rory Burns, Slider Kit, Snifferts, Takaoka Fan, The Motor Drive, Tomicus, Vanilla Mexican 17, Victor, Bubble, Chris Visconsi, Q Snotty Champs 2022, Emmett Shea, Lewis, Joe Parry, Lucien Von Kreuz, Michael Nista, MX Weeb, Niche, Patrick Barley, Phil Bacchus, and Unbroken Persona. If you'd like to join the Patreon, there'll be a link down below and up in the annotations. You can follow my Twitter if you want, follow my Instagram if you like, follow my TikTok, trying to get to 20,000 there, and of course you can follow my semi-active Twitch. But until then, I'll see you guys.